I'm looking forward to it, you know, I didn't get much sleep last night, it's, you know, it's almost like just before a big match, um, very apprehensive but excited as well, so really looking forward to it. Have you done much training preparation for it? No, not really, I've missed, obviously, I've missed the second half of the, the preparation, which is the longest part, because of the involvement at the football club and, you know, it's, it's been non-stop really since I've gone in there. And what are your thoughts for the next week? That's going to be tough. I know it's going to be tough. It's going to you you out of your comfort zone, and um, you know we get spoiled. You know we're, we're human beings who get spoiled left, right, and centre, especially in the, the industry I work. But it's for a great cause. You know, you just keep thinking of the the children that the Donna Louise support and the great work that they do at the hospice. And if I can give up seven days for for the children and, and for the wonderful people who work in there, then you know what am I all about? got seven days of rowing. How are you yep. feeling about it? Pretty good. He's uh, feeling good I'm about not, it. Because <laughs> he's only doing one day. I'm only day. doing one day of the seven days, yeah. yeah. Uh, due to time commitments and uh, laziness. fitness issues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and laziness. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's difficult to know what it's going to be like, but um, um, it'll be an experience. I think we can say that with some confidence. It's very difficult, isn't it, to train actually doing what we're doing now. So I think that's been my problem. Has yeah. that been your problem? That's been my problem. And I'm going to find it very difficult to row without having Columbo on in the background, <laughs> which is what I've been doing mostly, sitting yeah. at home and watching episodes oh. of Columbo. I, well, on the rowing machine, well, I've gone for a long time on the rowing machine, like sort of like an hour, an hour and a half, or which is nothing about what we're going to be doing. But I've done it with my eyes closed. Now, because I, I just find that very relaxing. I'm not going to be able to okay. do that. So it's like sensory deprivation. Yeah, you just keep going. And the money that we raise from this will make a big difference. We're hoping to be able to have three full-time nurses at least on there. Uh, but it's also about, it's not just about the children, it's about the parents, it's about respite. It's about sleep deprivation because if you've got kids who are terminally ill or have life-threatening illnesses, you know, you, it's not just the incredible torture of the fact, but also you're having to deal with uh, medicines all times of the day and night, trips to hospital, uh, you've probably got other kids, you may have a job and so we're trying to sort of flag up what the parents have to have to, to do and how important the hospice is for giving respite to the parents. Yeah, it is an amazing place, I, went, I spent uh, kind of a morning there before we set off, in fact well, you were sort of halfway through wasn't it at the time? Yeah, yeah. And it, like all hospices it does do amazing work but it's, it is a particularly fine one I think having visited yeah. lots and the other and the other strange thing of course about the hospice is people go oh, it must be so upsetting and now it's a joyous yeah, place it's, yeah. it's a joyous place children children have the capacity to find pleasure and, and happiness in, in nearly everything so when they're all together there it's it's actually it's a, it's a, an uplifting place